This video will show you how to do inverse Laplace transform by partial fraction. In this example, we'll deal with partial fraction with linear repeated factors. In this example, we are going to find the inverse Laplace transform of s over s plus 1 times s squared minus 1. In order to do partial fraction, we must factorize the denominator completely. If not possible, then you should try completing the square. Now, in the denominator, we have s plus 1, and s squared minus 1 can be factorized as s plus 1 times s minus 1. And then we can combine the two factors s plus 1 become s over s plus 1 square times s minus 1. So s plus 1 repeated two times. So it has repeated factor. To do partial fraction, s over s plus 1 square times s minus 1 can be split into a number a over s plus 1 plus a number b over s plus 1 square plus a number c over s minus 1. Now, just in case you have other pattern, take for example, if you have say uh, s plus 3 over s plus 4 cube s minus 1 square, then you see that s plus 4 repeated 3 times, s minus 1 repeated 2 times, then it can be split into partial fraction like this x plus 4, then x plus 4 square, then x plus 4 cube, 3 term, and the numerator is a, b, c, and then for x minus 1 square, there are 2 terms, x minus 1 plus x minus 1 square, and on top there are d and e. So, there are more terms here when there are repeated factors. And for our case, this is our problems. We are going to solve A, B, and C. Now, we are going to find the value of A, B, and C. To do this, I split them into three terms. A over S plus 1 plus B over S plus 1 square plus c over s minus 1. Notice that I leave a big gap in between because this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator. Which is s plus 1 square s minus 1. So once I multiply, by s plus 1 square s minus 1, the left hand side is s, the right hand side will be a over s plus 1 times s plus 1 square times s minus 1 plus b over s plus 1 square times s plus 1 square times s minus 1 plus c over s minus 1 times s plus 1 square times s minus 1. Okay, because the left hand side after I multiply by the denominator I get only s. Notice that there will be a lot of cancellation, so I get s is equal to 
x plus 1 and x plus 1 square cancel left with a times x plus 1 times x minus 1. And then x plus 1 square and x plus 1 square cancel. You only left with b times x minus 1. And x minus 1 and x minus 1 cancel. And then the third time you leave c times s plus 1 square of these three values a, b, and c b and c are easy to find let's try to find c first by some observation find c what you can do is try to put s equal to 1 then you notice that when you put s equal to 1, this will become 0. When you put s equal to 1, second term becomes 0. When you put s equal to 1, and put s equal to 1 on the left hand side, you will find that you get 1 equal to 0 plus Zero plus c times two square. That means one equal to four c, or c equal to one quarter. Next, to find the value of b, we put c equal one quarter into our earlier equation, and we substitute s equal to minus 1. When you put s equal to minus 1 everywhere, you'll find that the left hand side is minus 1 and then the first term is 0, second term is minus 2b and the third term is 0 again. Therefore, minus 1 equal to minus 2b or b equal to half. After we put b equal to half, then s equal to a times s plus 1 times s minus 1 plus half times s minus 1 plus 1 quarter times s plus 1 square. To find the value of a, we just put s equal to some other value. Take for example, I put s equal to 0, then when I put s equal to 0, the left hand side equals 0, and the right hand side will give you a times 1 times minus 1 plus half times minus 1 plus 1 quarter times 1 square. That means 0 equal to minus a minus half plus 1 quarter or a is equal to minus half plus 1 quarter equal to minus 1 quarter. Now of course, it's not necessary you put s equal to 0. You can put any value for s except s equal to minus 1 or 1 because when you put s equal to minus 1 or 1, a will disappear and then you cannot find a. Putting it back, I have a equal to minus 1 quarter, b equal to half, c equal to 1 quarter. Therefore, I can rewrite this as s over s plus 1 square over s minus 1 is equal to minus 1 quarter times 1 over s plus 1 plus half times 1 over s plus 1 square plus 1 quarter 1 over s minus 1. 
So the inverse Laplace transform of s over s plus 1 over s squared minus 1 is minus 1 quarter inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 plus half inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 square plus 1 quarter inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 1. The first term and the third term is very easy because since we know Laplace transform of e power a t is 1 over s minus a therefore the first term is minus 1 quarter times e power minus t the second term I have to use the first shift later on so I'll write here first inverse the first transform of s plus 1 square and then the third term is 1 quarter e power t for the second term inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 square I'm going to use the first shift first I shift s plus 1 to s this will give me inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s square but when I shift s plus 1 to s I have actually subtract 1 from s plus 1 to balance this, I must multiply by e power minus 1t. If you remember, if you remember the first shift. Now, inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared is equal to t. So this is e power minus t times t. As we know, inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared is t. Therefore, the final answer, the inverse Laplace transform of s over s plus 1, s squared minus 1, is equal to minus 1 quarter e power minus t plus half e power minus t times t plus one quarter e power t.